Yo, I don't think we should talk about oh, this. Come on, why not? People might misunderstand what we're trying to say, you know? No, but that's a part of life. Let's talk about sex. Hey there, rare finds and dirty minds. Today we are going to answer that uncomfortable question, can a Christian have sex before marriage? And if you don't mind, I want to start with a confession. When I was growing up, here is how I thought sex worked. I thought that everyone, not most, everyone lost their virginity at senior year prom. Then I thought that in college, everyone, not most, everyone had multiple sexual partners so that we could get good at sex. And then in your 20s, everyone dated around and had one night stands until you found someone who was as good at sex as you are, and then you got married to him. Again, I did not think this was most people. I did not think this was the norm. I thought this is literally how life worked. Which, if you think about it, actually makes sense, because that is exactly what movies and TV and media had been showing me my entire life. And it wasn't until I turned 14 years old and went to a Christian summer camp that I even heard the notion that there might be a different path available in terms of sex. And one of the first things that I learned, surprisingly enough, was sex is Good. Amen, brother! And I'm not just saying that from experience. The Bible actually talks about sex as a spring of water, as a fountain that we should rejoice in. Song of Songs is a book in the Bible dedicated almost exclusively to the celebration of sexual love. Even Paul, Mr. Single Man, even he concedes that sex between a man and wife is a good thing. And so all this evidence leads us to believe that sex was something designed by God, and it was designed to be very good. All right then, let's get crazy. But at the same time, the Bible also talks about how terrible and destructive sexual immorality is. Paul warns us against even having a hint of sexual immorality, and he says that among those who do, they will not inherit God's kingdom. And again, in another letter, Paul tells us to flee from all forms of sexual immorality. And we know that Jesus was pretty clear when warning us against adultery. But what's interesting is that in all of these verses, nowhere does the Bible talk explicitly about sex before marriage. When it comes to this specific question, the Bible does not give us a black and white rule book. Okay, John, that's great, but what can I do with my girlfriend and still be okay? How far is too far? When can we have sex? And you see, the problem with questions like this is twofold. The first problem is that, once again, you are not going to find explicit answers in the Bible. The Bible talks about sex a lot, but it always speaks about it in general terms. Which only leads me to believe that sex before marriage is not a matter of instruction, but more a matter of wisdom. Which brings us to the second, or the sex and the second thing wrong with these questions is that they treat sex as merely a physical act. Good, biblical sex, the kind that God designed, is so much more than just two bodies rolling around in a bed together. The type of sex that we're talking about here expresses this deep level of oneness, where two people say to one another, I want to be connected to you, not only physically, but also spiritually and emotionally as well. And so, since this physical act of sex expresses this emotional and spiritual promise of oneness, it's probably not very wise to engage in that physical act with someone whom you're not ready to uphold that promise with. And of course, you might say, Oh, John, you don't know. Me and my boyfriend are in love. We're gonna be together forever. And that very well may be. But again, according to biblical wisdom, sex is reserved for those who are willing to affirm with their lives what they promise 
with their bodies. And therefore, sex that does not fulfill that promise of commitment is not only unwise, but the Bible calls it immoral and sinful. This obviously applies to those engaging in sex outside the bonds of a committed marriage, but it also applies to those who are misusing sex within the bonds of their marriage. As with many of the things that we talk about on this show, sex is not about checking off all the right boxes and following all the instructions perfectly. A healthy and godly view of sex starts with cultivating a wise and pure heart. So if you're still stuck asking this question, can I have sex before marriage? I would challenge you and say that the question you're asking is too small. A better question might be, is how can I, as Paul says, flee from sexual immoral activity so that I can heighten my view of sex and marriage until both of them are more to me than just a physical act. So I want to end by saying this. You do not have to lose your virginity in high school. You do not need to have multiple sexual partners in college. You do not need to have meaningless one night stands in your 20s. This is not the way that everyone goes about it. There is a different way to deal with this thing called sex. It is meant to be a good, good thing within the bonds of a committed marriage relationship. But it can be very complicated. And the quickest way to complicate sex in your future with your future spouse is to misuse it right now in your present. So may you leave today with a higher view of sex. One that values purity of mind, of heart, and of spirit over the temporary satisfaction of the body. And may you in your future experience all of the goodness and all of the beauty that God designed for you and your spouse. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching this video. I know that this topic's a little cringeworthy and a little taboo within the church and whatnot. So I wanted to talk about it explicitly and I wanted to dive into the Bible and see what the Bible really says about this. Again, this is my interpretation. I would love to hear your thoughts, your stories on this subject. Please don't get too personal. Uh, but please comment down below and let me know. I love hearing from you all. I thank you so much for watching these videos, even these cringeworthy ones where you're like, ooh, sex. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I have for you today. I love you all. Keep being awesome.